Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Earlier, I sat down with Labour's Shadow Justice Secretary, Richard Bergen, to talk about today's launch. It was his first BBC interview since footage emerged of him saying Zionism is the enemy of peace, a statement he had previously denied making. I spoke to him about this, but started our conversation by asking if Labour's attempt to appeal to both Leavers and Remainers was a risky move. I understand what you uh, mean, because the easiest thing for the Labour Party, or any party uh, to do, would be to pick one side or the other. Then at least we'd have a body of people who agree with us on everything uh, in relation to this issue, whether it be Leavers or Remainers. So I think the Labour Party has picked a difficult road, a road whereby we can be kicked from both sides. You might be punished. Yeah, but it's the right thing to do. I think it's the most difficult road, but it's the right road to take uh, for the country as well, because we want to end this divide. Most people don't class classify themselves primarily as being Leavers or Remainers, however strongly they feel about this issue. We want to end this divide society and bring people together. It's, the tough, it's a tough thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. But even if you get absolutely drubbed in the poll, and you do very badly in these European elections, will it still have been the right thing to do? I think it is the right thing to do, and I don't think, by the way, that we're going to uh, get Well, uh, predictions drugged. are a difficult game in politics. It is but, very but, but, but I suppose, just to quote Mary Cray, the Labour MP, she says, if Labour stands in the middle of the road on Brexit, we'll get run over from both directions. Uh, that's, that's true, it's a difficult position we've taken, but it's the right thing to do because whether people uh, live uh, in Huddersfield and voted to leave or live in Hackney and voted to remain, they're both facing the problems of austerity, nine years now of conservative austerity, of cuts, of the housing crisis, of insecure, uh, unstable Yeah, but before employment. all of that, we're not having any legislation at the moment, it's a zombie parliament. They need a solution to get around for Brexit. The reality is we don't have a real government, it's like a zombie government, it's almost as if Theresa well, why May Why are you getting in bed with them and doing these talks for the last five weeks? No, it was right that we entered into these talks and it's right that we're still part of them because we want to bring people together we want to see it as a traditional british compromise because most people i speak to both in my own constituency when i'm campaigning across the country actually just want this over and done with they yeah, want they a traditional also, british compromise but they also want to be able to vote for a labor party where they know what the solution is going to be on brexit they don't want you in the middle of the road they want to know so let me ask you clearly you know is Labour the party to stop Brexit? The Labour Party doesn't exist to stop Brexit. Other parties have been formed that think that is their only purpose politically. But the Labour the MEP candidate, Lord Adonis, just to say, has said that's what you need to do. In these European elections, vote for Labour and we will stop Brexit. I think he's corrected himself no, since then. But the, the, the Labour Party exists to bring people together because we know that the real divide in this country isn't between whether people voted leave or whether they voted remain it's actually part the real divide is whether they're part of the 99 percent or the one percent the 99 percent of people who are getting a rotten deal under this rotten system whether we're in the eu or outside of the eu and i think that labor is well placed to showcase our values to the country in these elections which nobody really expected to be having to take place because a vote for labor in these elections is a vote against scapegoating migrants so, a vote so you're uh, happy to fudge it it's not a, it's not about a fudge it's well, about, it's about bringing, you're saying it's a risk to be in the middle like this it, it is a risk it's a hard road but it's the right thing to do and what the, people really need what people really need from their politicians now is people uh, seeking to heal divides, okay, not people seeking to expand divides for their narrow uh, political advantage. Five weeks into these talks then with the Conservatives, John McDonnell, the Shadow Chancellor, said at the weekend he doesn't trust the Prime Minister due to leaks around this. Prime Minister has said and her team they don't want to stay in a customs union like Labour wants. When are you going to actually walk away from these talks? Well, we're not going to walk away from these talks lightly because we didn't enter into these I know, talks but five lightly. Weeks in. But I, for example, and many others are getting more and more concerned that actually negotiating with this Prime Minister 
isn't as straightforward as some might hope because she's actually negotiating with her own side continually and all the time there's new uh, candidates for Conservative Prime Minister popping up left, right and centre. Yeah, but aren't you, you look like you're propping up this government more We're not and propping more. up this So how long are you going to give it? Could see, you answer that? Is there a game see, plan? We want to see an end to this government But five as soon as weeks possible. in? That's why we're calling for a general election. How much longer are you going to give it five weeks in? Well, the negotiating team are taking it very seriously but now it's time, five weeks in as you say, for Theresa May to come forward and say she's actually dumping some of these red lines and that she's not actually just trying to string along uh, so not only our parliament but the British public in an attempt to hold on to power for a few more weeks or even a few more days. So you're going to keep going with them until she walks away, that's what it sounds like? No, no, we're taking part in these negotiations in a responsible way. Uh, if it becomes fundamentally clear that it's become a waste of time because of Theresa May's behaviour and the Tories competing with each other to take over from her, then of course uh, we'll no longer be taking part uh, in these talks. We won't want, we won't want to take part in something which just becomes a charade. Today, Jeremy Corbyn labelled anyone who supports Nigel Farage and his Brexit party as Islamophobes, anti-Semites and conspiracy theorists. He says, quote, Nigel Farage's Brexit is a Brexit for conspiracy theorists, for those who see Muslims and migrants and George Soros as the enemy. Isn't that a bit rich coming from you? Well, Nigel Farage, after nine years of conservative austerity, doesn't offer the solutions to anyone. This is someone who joined the Conservative Party at a young age. He scapegoated migrants. He's called for the privatisation of our NHS. He offers cheap and easy slogans, but no solutions to the problems facing working class people across this country, whether they voted leave or remain, after nine years of Conservative austerity. But you're a man who believes that all Zionists are enemies of peace. Well, that was a comment uh, that I made. Uh, a video was shown of me making that comment before I was an MP five years ago. I regret making that comment because it's an oversimplification because actually it fails to distinguish between those Israeli citizens who are campaigning for peace, who are campaigning for peace, and people like Benjamin Netanyahu and his government who are clear barrier to peace and human rights. But you lied. That video was captured, it was, it was revealed a month ago, and when you were asked about it on the BBC by my colleague Andrew Neil, you said, not only did I not say that, you said that repeatedly, you said, I don't believe that. Why on earth should we believe anything you have to say when you outright lie? Well, it's a serious point you made, uh, Emma, and I certainly uh, didn't lie. Let me explain, you put forward a serious point, let me give uh, the full answer to this. I was first asked by a newspaper in 2016 whether I'd made such a declaration. I couldn't remember making such a declaration. It was an I, impassioned speech. I asked, them, I asked them when I was meant to have said it and where. They couldn't tell me. Fast forward two years later, to 2018, and at your colleague Andrew Neil uh, asked me if I made that comment in a meeting in 2016. I said, it's not my view. I said, I've been asked where I've made this comment. And then a video a year after that came to light, not of 2016, where I did some speeches after I'd been to Palestine and Israel, but actually from 2014, five years ago, before I was even a member of parliament. The enemy of the Palestinian people are Zionists. Zion Zionism is the enemy of the peace. I do not have the time to read the entire thing. It was I a 30 second video. I think, I think you have read the entire No, I've not. That entire more, clip. more of it here. It carries on. You tell people to go and look up on the internet to find MPs, Labour MPs, who are Labour Friends of Israel members, and you implore them to leave that. You keep going. That speech, it I, turns out. It's or, a speech. Why did you lie? I, I've just explained I didn't lie. Well, you just I, conveniently I'm, I'm sure, forgot. Emma, I'm sure, Emma, that you can't remember every answer you've given to a question half a decade ago. I could remember standing in front of a group of people in this current and making job. an impassioned speech. And I, could, I'll tell you something else. I could remember it if it was my view. So are you, not, are not, you sorry that you got caught or are you sorry that that view was aired? I don't use that. What I was seeking to do, uh, as the transcript you've got shows, is distinguish between the Jewish people and other political actors. Lumping all Zionists together is clumsy and wrong. You said what you said. You were asked about it and you lied. And you're a man who just took the... If I can finish this point, you just took the Sun newspaper to court and won. You are a man who likes facts. You have a very senior position as Shadow Justice Secretary, which makes you a man of record. People would find it extremely difficult when they look this video up online, as they probably will after our interview, to think that you couldn't even remember making that speech the people, and saying it. The, the people, you lied. So why should we believe a single word that comes out If you let me answer, if that's okay. Um, 
the people who put it to me that I made this comment couldn't say what year I was meant to have made it, couldn't say where I was meant to have made it, couldn't say what context I was meant to have made so it. So does that make they, it okay for you no, to no, forget it conveniently? They, they were saying I'd made it in 2016. I couldn't remember using that turn. You. I couldn't remember using that turn of phrase. You are half, so passionate in this video. Half a decade ago. You smeared an entire group of people around the world, so I ask you again, is it right for you to smear those people who support Nigel Farage because you say he's spreading lies when you've done exactly the same and you lied about not saying Nigel that. Farage uh, has made uh, a career as a kind of snake oil salesman in politics, posing as being anti-establishment, while making out that the reason for austerity is actually to do with migration, whether it be from people from other EU countries or elsewhere. That, that, that is may completely or may not be the unfair. Case. He's not here to answer I, my question. I, like the Labour Party, want to see an end to the human rights abuses visited on the Palestinian people by Netanyahu's government. I, like the Labour Party, want to see a two-state outcome. How anything you say? This isn't an interview about the foreign policy of Israel. It's an interview about you lying. I've explained already that I uh, forgot a phrase that I, it turns out I used half a decade ago before I was an MP. I think most of your viewers could identify with, did you use a phrase in an unspecified context half a decade ago before you were in your current job? I didn't tell a falsehood uh, and I've explained why I wouldn't use that phrase now. Thank you very much for your time today.